what is going on guys it is may 16th it is a nice nice friday it's finally getting some sun out in this houston rain we are about to hit our final lifting session before the competition but before we do that we gotta get a nice fade so i'm gonna go in get a haircut real quick and i'll catch in with you guys right after the haircut uh, i'm gonna do one of those sick transitions actually one of these Sheesh, boy. Wow, I feel like a million bucks. Jamal, right, man, this beat is crazy. I'm gonna do a little walking, I'm gonna do a little stretching, I'm gonna do it outside today, very nice weather, no one else is out here, so my anxiety is a little bit down, but okay, we're gonna talk a little bit about the workout, because this video is going to be about just the little quirks, the little habits that I have that uh, developed for about five years of competing, and that is meat week. Depending on what you, you know, compete in, weightlifting, powerlifting, bodybuilding, every meat week is going to be different, um, but these, I wouldn't say these are true to everybody. I would say these are pretty much just true to me because I can't speak for everyone. Beginning of the week is usually a decently heavy lift. Um, usually you hit your openers. That's what I've been doing for the past five years. This week I am following a different taper program. Um, I'm following a, uh, I'm following hybrid performance method, which is very different from what I used to do, but they have like a competition template that you kind of do two weeks out. So I've been following that and it is different. So the one thing that stays the same though, um, the last session that you do before you compete, you hit powers. Let me tell you guys about what the difference between a power and a full. The two lifts that you compete in are the snatch and the clean and jerk. When you do a power snatch or a power clean, uh, I'm gonna show you guys in the video, but <clears throat> you're essentially catching it above parallel or catching it as high as you can. Um, pretty much what this insinuates is if you try to look up the definition of power, you're trying to get under the bar as fast and powerful and as strong as you can, right? The purpose of the power snatch and the power clean in a perspective of someone that's, you know, about to compete, you are moving very dynamically as opposed to, I mean, your brain is kind of just thinking to move more dynamically because in a power snatch or power clean, you need to catch the bar higher than you would a normal. So it's kind of like you pull it a little higher, you're a little bit, you feel a little bit more powerful, you feel stronger, and that kind of translates a little bit over to the lifts on competition day. Now, it's a little bit different because this time I'm doing powers plus fulls. Um, they're very light percentage work. You're not supposed to do anything heavy because you need to give your body some time to rest for the competition. But this is just to dial in that good technique and that strong, you know, just that strong sense of movement that will carry over well over to the meet. So, that's the first thing you're gonna do, probably gonna do powers. If you compete in Olympic weightlifting, there is a good chance that when the competition comes the week before or probably the last training session before or the last couple sessions before you compete, you will be doing power variations of the lifts. The next things in this video I'm gonna talk about when it comes to meet week is cutting weight for weigh-ins and recovery. All right, guys. We are at the athletic room and this is a rare, not really a rare, but it's a good find that I found down in Houston. So back when I was living in Pennsylvania, I got um, chiropractic adjustments every, I wanna say at least once a month. But besides that, that was kind of like the extent of my recovery. I took ice baths every so often. I took salt baths every so often, but I never really got into a very solid recovery routine. Um, but I kind of wanted to take it a little bit more seriously because I mean, as a lifter, as a head, you know, just like a weightlifter, a powerlifter, any kind of heavy lifting, your body goes through a lot. I feel like a lot of us just kind of, kind of push through and we kind of just, you know, carry on, keep pushing. Like we don't really think too much about recovery. You know, sometimes we wake up sore, but we kind of just deal with it and just like, you know, just lift sore. But I've had some nagging injuries ever since I started weightlifting. You know, in the beginning, it was just like wrists, you know, getting into the front rack mobility, um, shoulders from just having the bar in an overhead position. That's something that I'm not, that I wasn't comfortable with prior to weightlifting. And knees from just a lot of, you know, squatting, a lot of knee bending, you know, when you do a snatch and you're pulling off the ground, you're using your knees, it's knee extension. When you're, you know, doing a squat, obviously that's knees. When you're doing a dip and drive, it's a lot of just knees. 
knees. You're just using your knees a lot, okay? Well, a lot of my friends that I live with told me about this place. It is called the Athletic Room. And a lot of my friends actually go here and my friends recommended me and I got a little bit of a discount and I kind of went in and I almost like fell in love. Like the chiropractor, doc, uh, Dr. David, he worked on me a little bit. He worked on me two days ago and did some cupping. I did some uh, tissue work and it hurt, hurt like crap. And, but it actually just, I just feel really good right now. And yeah, so this, the athletic room pretty much just has everything, you know, it has a chiropractor, a cryo chamber, they have cupping, compression, they have all sorts of different ways of recovery. And um, ever since uh, I found out about this place, I started, I started going here pretty much once a month. Um, like I said, about two, two days ago, I went in and got soft tissue work and cupping done. And now I'm back today to do some cryo and compression. All right, guys, so what I'm doing right now is the compression portion. So this is the Balma Tech. Um, you can't really tell, but it's squeezing my legs. Just adding a little bit of compression. Um, to both legs, so I'm gonna be doing this for 15 minutes and then um, there's a portion over here that yeah, I can put around on my hips So I'm gonna do that for 15 minutes as well. And then once this is done, we will be hitting into the cryo chamber It's like super convenient what? Super convenient I <laughs> oh, look good, good? Yep. Okay, Alrighty Ten. Huh? 10 might be a little bit much Do or die Yeah, really? Oh, probably. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah. Feel like it. It's like hypothermia, you know? Yeah. I don't know how many minutes would be like that. I think that's it. That's so. yeah. <laughs> okay, we reached like negative one, like negative 130. Negative so. 130. Okay. Oh, did I check? Nope, you're good. All right. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Say hi, Yoshi. Say hi. Okay, guys, we are on the final topic of the video, which is going to be cutting weight for the competition. We are a little bit over 24 hours out. I want to say we're probably, or under 24 hours out. I want to say we're probably, it was 11 o'clock. I go on and lift at six. So we're 19 hours out until the weigh-in. So uh, let's go check the weight. Okay, I think the scale said 225.6 or 225.8, I forget. But uh, yeah, we are pretty much right on track. We have a little bit under a pound to lose, which uh, I think I could just lose overnight from not doing anything. So I just need to make sure I don't spill over. So right now I'm just going to eat a very light meal. I'll probably eat two light meals today and I should be good. I'm probably gonna go walk on the treadmill tonight just to be extra safe. Just do a little bit, a very, very mild walk like maybe 10, 15 minutes with uh, a hoodie and a jacket on. So yeah, I'm gonna show you guys what I make for food. And then we are going to go into the water cutting aspect of what I did and kind of what I think you should do. We have a bunch of egg whites. They're egg beaters, but they're egg whites essentially. Got some onions, peppers, mushrooms, and a little bit of sausage. And this will probably be my only meal for the day. Um, it's 11 o'clock, so it sounds a little crazy, but I am going to bed at 8 o'clock, so I'm not going to be, it's not going to be that bad. So at the most, I'll have a protein shake later on, but around 3 or 4 o'clock, I'm probably going to go walk on the treadmill, get a nice sweat in, and then I'll weigh myself later in the evening and see where I'm at then, and kind of go from there. Come on, kiddos. No, Yoshi. Alright guys, so a little bit of change of plans. We're not going to walk on the treadmill today. I'm just going to take these dogs out for a walk. It's hot enough outside. I'm already getting kind of a sweat on, so you guys will keep me pretty busy. And hopefully I'll lose the weight this way. If not, eh, who cares? All right, guys, we're going to talk about my experience with cutting and making weight for the meat. I've competed in the 102 weight class um, ever since the weight classes got changed. Before then, I was a 105. And before then, I was actually a 94. So back when I first started weightlifting for the first year or so, I was at 94 kilos body weight, which is 207 pounds. Um, 
One time uh, I ran into a meet and my coach was like, why don't you just lift a little heavier this meet, okay? Just so I don't have to worry about cutting and all that. So ever since then, I started competing at 105 and I made it a point to not have to cut down for competition. You know, for a lot of people, a lot of people train at a body weight higher than what they compete at and then they just cut down for the meet. For me, depending on how over I am, it kind of adds an extra bit of kind of mental strain and kind of just, you know, oh God, am I gonna make weight? Like a lot of just, a lot of pains that go along with it. So I try to make it a point to do my best to just try and stay as close to competition body weight as much as possible, just so I don't have to worry about cutting so much when the meet comes. For this meet, when I signed up, it was very spontaneous, okay? I wasn't planning to do a meet until, you know, the fall, but a lot of my friends were doing this meet and they were just like, friends, just come and do it for fun. And I was like, okay, I'll do a meet. So even though it is for fun, I do want to compete and stay at my body weight category. I don't want to go up or, or anything like that because 109 is a little bit too heavy for my liking. And I am in a like point in my life where I do want to drop down in body weight just for life reasons, not for you know weightlifting or competition related. I just want to drop down. So it was a good re it was a good reason for me to kind of just go back down to 102. I haven't been 102 in a very long time. Um, I dropped a good amount of weight for this meet. When I first signed up for this meet. I was about 233 pounds. And as you see in the video, I was 225.6. And I just weighed myself actually. I am now at the body weight of 102. I am at 224.4 pounds. So I've dropped uh, close to eight pounds ever since I started this prep. And you know, it's a lot of water weight and it's just cleaning up the diet. That's honestly what it is. It's not too much that you have to do. A little bit of cardio here and there, but nothing too strenuous. like. Honestly, just walking for 15 minutes, like two to three times a week, and that's it. So I'm gonna talk to you guys a little bit about something different that I did, this prep that I found out. You know, I've been wanting to do it for a really long time, but I just never knew how, and I was just like, screw it, I'll just try it. So, right here, this is a gallon of water. This was my best friend for this past week of prep. So a water cut, I don't really know how it works, to be honest. All I know is you drink a crap ton of water before the meat, and it pretty much just, you just pretty much pee out all of the water weight that you have in your system. And by the time, you know, the end of the week comes, you kind of taper down the water consumption, you should pee in and you should lose a lot of weight. Again, I don't know the science behind it. It's just, it's just magic, it's magic. But I was 231 at the beginning of the week and now I'm 224, so I lost seven pounds. So I don't know, it, it just happened. So yeah. That's about it. That's that. That was my cut. I, you know, I would recommend for everyone that if you're your first time competing, I would not cut weight unless you're really, really close. Like if you are a 73, if you're competing in like the 73 kilo class and you're 74 and you're like a month away, you can cut a kilo in a month. That's very easy. But if you're like four kilos over like I was, it's a little bit kind of like a do you really want to or not? But I'm a veteran at this point. I've been competing for five years. So I know how to cut the weight. My body's kind of weird. It fluctuates really easily. Like this morning when you saw that I weighed in at 225.6, I actually weighed 228 before that. I went out, I washed my car, went out in the sun, just washed my car for like an hour or two. I came back, I was 225.6. And then I went to go walk the dogs and now I'm 224. So in the span of like a couple hours, I lost four pounds. So yeah, my body's real weird. You just have to know your body, know what it's capable of. I have a lot of fat on me and I'm not really consistent with my water intake. I really do want to get more consistent with it. Now this week kind of opened my eyes to how much, how important water consumption really is. So yeah, that's my take on cutting. All right guys, if you made it to the end of the video, I want to thank you so much for watching. I hope it's not too long. I think it's going to be like right at 15 minutes. So if you want to do cardio, listen to me talk, listen to me talk about my competition prep. This is a perfect video for you. If you're watching this, um, I'm already competing. I have probably already bombed out. No, I'm just kidding. I probably already lifted uh, at, the, at the point that you're watching this video because I am lifting at 6 a.m. So I am, right now I am 12 hours out. I'm gonna go home, get some sleep. Gotta be up around like, I weigh in at six o'clock in the morning and the meets are like 45 minutes away. So I need to get up like, I, I like to get up like an hour before just because I need, I want time for my body to wake up. Then I'll go weigh in, eat, lift, and that's it. So I'm gonna make a whole separate video about that. I'm gonna document the whole, th the whole day of tomorrow of the meet. But yeah, thank you again. Thank you again. Man, man, I can't talk. I can't talk in front of the camera, that's weird. But thank you guys again so much for watching. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Say goodbye, PD.